Yo, what is up gamers, it's Sebastian here and today I'll be going on a weird video, uh, maybe weird, I know I don't really know what to describe it, it's not really my regular content, which by the way from now on my content is going to be uploaded daily, but only on Saturdays, so get hyped for that, daily videos every Saturday, but onto the video where I'm talking about weird rulings, uh, ruling questions, that have no answers to them. I don't really know why I'm making this video, I thought it would be really fun to do so, so that's why I'm doing it. These rolling questions do not have an answer to them, uh, either due to a lack of documentation or the really cursed situations that I can come up with. Anyways, on to the video with question 1. Player A attempts to special summon Ant Eater Eaten Ant. Player B responds by activating Evosa Lagia's effect to negate the summon. Player A chains Forbidden Chalice targeting the Lagia as chain link 3. Uh, player B activates Elsador Fusion. On resolution of Elsador Fusion, player B summons Elsador Winder. Then Forbidden Chalice resolves negating the Lagia, which means Lagia is negated, and the summon of Ant Eater Eaten Ant is successful. How many special summons? Would player A have this turn? So to break down why this is a really cursed ruling question. Anteater eating ant is what people refer to as a summoning condition. It's a summon on a monster that doesn't start a chain. Other examples include Black Duster Soldier and Void of the Beginning and Cyber Dragon. These are all monsters that summon themselves without starting a chain. And normally you're not meant to be able to respond to the summon since normally the, the whole point of not starting a chain is that they don't start a chain. So the issue here lies with Evosar Lagia. Um, this is a card that lets you respond to these summons that do not start a chain. However, because Lagia is spell speed 2, that means you can use other spell speed 2 in this chain that's responding to the attempted summon of a monster that doesn't start a chain. The issue here is that we now get a lot of really weird situations. Um, not that it's necessarily weird, but because there's no documentation on how we should handle this, it's really it's really hard to answer questions involving like you're uh, trying to negate a summoner of a summoning condition uh, because normally you're not meant to be able to use spell speed 2 effect in response to a monster that's attempted to summon itself with a summoning condition. So now we have this situation where does Rinder count it as a special summon for the turn because normally what Rinder says is that each player can only special summon once per turn but in this situation would it count the anteater eating ant as, an, as a successful summon or does Rinder need to be at the start of the summon in order for it to count the whole thing. Uh, this is different to like a monster that summons itself by activating like Gizmeka Wochi because it doesn't start the summon until its effect is resolving. However, the thing with these summoning conditions like anti to eating ant is that it's already started to summon itself, so there's no way to tell whether or not Winter would count that or not, since it technically should be starting its summon. Um, if you replace El Shadol Fusion and Rinda with Celestial Transformation and Archer Christia, we get a situation where the opponent isn't allowed to special summon, but the summon has already been attempted, what would happen in that situation? We, we get stuff like that, like Lagia enables really weird ruling questions that really have no answers because we have no documentation on how to handle it. Pretty much the issue here is we don't know whether or not these cards count the start of the summon attempt or if it only needs to be there at the end of the summon attempt. And because we don't know right, whether or not Rinder has to see the whole summon, or whether or not Rinder does has to be there at the end, there's no way to answer this question and be correct. So this is a question with no true answer to. So this next question is something that's been quite relevant recently, and it's involving pole position and loops created by pole position. Player A controls in Furch Perga Trio, two Goblin Attack Force equipped with a Defined Sword Phoenix Blade and a face down pole position. Player B begins their turn and Player A activates his pole position. Player B responds by activating a Call by the Grave from his hand targeting Player A's Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. What would happen in this scenario? So the issue here is that spells and traps, normal spells and traps when they are activated, they don't leave the field until after the whole chain is resolved unless they are removed by other means. 
So in this instance, when pole position resolves before the chain is considered complete, an infinite loop would start because Purgatrio's attack would be increased, and then that would make the Toon Goblin attack force no longer unaffected by Phoenix Blade, which puts Toon Goblin attack force higher attack than Purgatrio, which means it would go back down because it's no longer affected by Phoenix Blade, and then it would go back up and just loop infinitely with no way to end the loop. Now the issue of pole position comes from there not being any documentation of what a loop is according to Yu-Gi-Oh! Anywhere, there is no documentation anywhere, meaning there is no way to actually answer how to handle a scenario where an infinite loop is created. In this case, uh, there's no way to know what would happen here because an infinite loop would happen, would we rewind and say call by the grave was an illegal activation or would we just continue the game and just say we destroy pole position. Uh, if we go by Upper Deck Entertainment, they're the only documentation on loops we have. However, Upper Deck Entertainment is known for being very not trustworthy with their rulings. They've said stuff such as you can activate a Thunder Dragon even if you have no from the dragons in deck and stuff like that so there's a lot of stuff that upper deck entertainment has said which is no longer considered true so trusting um upper deck entertainment on what a loop is is not really ideal because we don't know whether or not that is how we should consider loops now so with no real documentation there is no way to answer how we handle any loops, like any infinite loops that you cannot stop halfway through. One thing to note though, even if you look at Upper Deck Entertainment's rulings, like we, let's just say they're the only source, so let's look at how they ruled it and just do it that way. They did not rule anything that would help us in this situation. There is no way to know what we would do in this situation, even if we go by Upper Deck Entertainment's rulings. So this is a real guessing game about what we do to resolve this question here. And as such, there is no real answer to this question and nothing we can really do to find out until there's more documentation on loop. So on to the next question. This one is going to be quite short. Player A controls Thunder Dragon Colossus and Dinger see the Orcas of the Evening Star with an Acrobat Monkey attached as a material and there is a Morphtronic Radeon in his graveyard. Player B activates Raigeki. Is player A allowed to use both Thunder Dragon Colossus and Dinger Shu's effects uh, to protect themselves from destruction? The issue is that Ding Gershu's protection applies to every card that would be destroyed at the same instance. Since Raigeki is threatening to destroy both Ding Gershu and Colossus, if both Ding Gershu and Colossus were to try to protect themselves, then Colossus would be receiving protection from itself and from Ding Gershu. This is a situation that doesn't really have any documentation on. Are we able to substitute a uh, trice to prevent the same instance of destruction? So pretty much, in this scenario, will we be able to detach from the Gersu and banish the Thunder from the grave uh, to protect Colossus twice? There's not really anything to say whether or not we can, there's nothing to say that Colossus can't be protected twice, but there's nothing to say that it could be. So with no real documentation about uh, substituting destroying cards like this, there's no way to know whether or not both Dingers and Colossus would be able to apply their protection at the same time. Now this last question that doesn't really have an answer to is not really something that's relevant to the TCG at the moment. For it could be in the future, there is no confirmation on that. But this is a question regarding the OCG uh, rule changes that they've made, such as to trigger effects, etc, etc. So in the context of the new rule changes in the OCG where effects that look at summons no longer count unsuccessful summon attempts, player A attempts to normal summon bat and player B responds with solemn judgement to negate the summon. Player B also controls the face up summon limit. With the new OCG changes in mind, how many more summons can player A do? So as of the date of when this video goes up, which is the 9th of May, Saturday 2020, this question is doesn't really have an answer because the OCG, I don't think they've, oh I think the perfect rulebook has been released but it hasn't been translated there and until that gets translated and until they update the database with all these rulings on, there's no clear way to know how we should rule this question. Uh, one thing to note is that reminder text 
doesn't usually reflect accurately what the card does so looking at the little text in bracket on summoning it isn't really going to be a suitable answer to this usually um the database is very more reliable but with the new rule changes in the ocg we don't know how that would affect the database and so we don't know whether or not the negated summons would still count under the new ocg rule changes for summoning it and as such until we get the update to the database or until we get the perfect, perfect rulebook translated there's not really any way to answer this question and as such this isn't a question with an answer anyway so i hope this video was at least fun to listen to or watch um it's quite an interesting topic like ruling questions that don't really have any documentation on as we get really cursed situations come up that we just kind of have to guess and come up with an answer out of nowhere in order to proceed like with the game state so these sort of like situations are always quite interesting so if you want to see a uh, part two to this video of even more really cursed ruling questions that no one is able to answer be sure to let me know in the comments below make sure to like comment and subscribe in general if you're already subscribed, tell your friend to subscribe. If your friend is already subscribed, get new friends and tell them to subscribe. And with that, I'll see you gamers next time.